Good evening. Welcome to Singapore Tonight. I'm Genevieve Wu. 26 January will be polling day for a by-election held in the single-seat constituency of Pongo East if the seat is contested. Nomination day is on 16th January. The president issued the writ of election today. An election buzz has been surrounding the northeastern part of Singapore in recent weeks, and speculation has been rife over if and when a by election would be called in Pongal East. Shortly after the writ of election was issued, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung released a statement explaining his decision to hold a by election in the single member constituency. Following the resignation of former MP Michael Palmer, Mr Lee said his first priority was to look after the residents of Pongal East. He said Deputy Prime Minister Tiu Chi Hien has also taken a personal interest in the residents' welfare. Explaining how the national agenda will be a busy one with the White Paper on Population, Budget 2013 and the ongoing Singapore conversation, the Prime Minister said after the by-election, the country could then focus back on these national issues. Mr Lee said he wanted to give residents their own MP in Parliament and he hopes Pongal East residents will vote for the candidate who can best represent them in Parliament, solve their problems and improve their lives. The Pongal East seat fell vacant last month when former MP Michael Palmer vacated the seat after admitting to an extramarital affair. Mr Palmer was also the Speaker of Parliament. Minister of State for Trade and Industry and Mayor for North East CDC Teo Salak has been overseeing the constituency while Mr Zainal Sapari has been chairing the Pasteris Pongol Town Council. This will be the country's second by election following the general election in 2011. In the 2011 general election, the Pongo East single member constituency saw a three-way fight among political parties that contested. The People's Action Party's Michael Palmer won over half of the votes. Dylan Lowe with a look back. The Pongo East single member constituency had over 30,000 voters in the 2011 general election. It was the only constituency that saw a three-cornered fight. Then, the People's Action Party's Michael Palmer, the Workers' Party's Li Li Lian, and the Singapore Democratic Alliance's Desmond Lim campaign for residents' hearts and minds. The three focused largely on ground concerns during the hustings. Mr Lim promised new facilities of over a million dollars for residents if he won. It was something Mr Palmer cast doubt on. He was the incumbent, elected in 2006 when the area was still under Pasiris Pongol Group Representation Constituency before it was carved out as a single seat. Mr Palmer had said his time in the ward was used to build cohesion among residents and hoped for continuing support. Miss Lee, on the other hand, chose to look at estate cleanliness and cost of living issues. When the dust settled, Mr Palmer won, taking around 55% of votes. Miss Lee took about 41% got around 4%. Imelda Saad has been following the developments. Imelda, let's talk about uh, this. Now, how are the various um, uh, political parties and what are they saying? Well, Jen, uh, first we have the ruling People's Action Party. Now, all eyes are on colorectal surgeon Dr. Ko Po Kun, who was seen at two separate grassroots events with uh, caretaker MP Teo Sir Luck on Tuesday. Now, Dr. Ko has acknowledged that he may be fielded as a candidate should there be a contest, but that he's still waiting for the green light from the top. Now, having said that, Mr. Teo threw his support behind Dr. Ko, describing him as a well-respected man who will take care of residents' interests. He's a friend and, and, and he's volunteered and, and uh, he continues to volunteer. He, he has always put uh, people's interests at heart and uh, he really cares for the people and you can really tell that he's genuine and very sincere. Now, various opposition parties have indicated their interest mm -hmm. in this board. Have they said anything? Well, the Workers' Party Secretary General Lao Tia Kiang says the party is ready to contest. He said his party will announce its candidate in due course and added that the logistics are ready. Mr Lao said that it's good that the Prime Minister has decided to call a by-election as soon as possible. And he said it's fair so that residents of Pungal East can have a representative of their own. BAP is an incumbent in Pongo. Uh, they have uh, advantage being an incumbent. Uh, uh, unlike uh, Aogang, uh, uh, I think uh, it's logical for the Prime Minister to settle it, call it as fast as possible before any party could uh, further entrench and establish themselves there. 
Ms Lau said he does not want to speculate on the results but said that the voters have seen what the party can offer and will leave it up to them to decide. On the possibility of facing a six-cornered fight, Mr Lau said so far there are no plans to have a joint meeting with other oppo opposition parties who have voiced their interests to contest in the ward. Meantime, the party has issued a call for volunteers to help with the by-election. Now, separately, Singapore Democratic Party's chairman, Mohammad Jufri Mahmoud, said his party did not expect the Prime Minister to decide on a by-election date so soon. Mr Jufri said even though the party is ready for a contest, it would have to accelerate its campaign, which would comprise mainly of house-to-house -house visits. The party will announce its candidate within the next few days. Mr Jufri added that as far as possible, the party will try to avoid a multi-cornered fight, but he stressed that the SDP is firm on contesting the by-election. We are hoping that we can uh, persuade the WPA to give uh, another flavour, another flavour to the opposition uh, side, you know. Now you only taste the Workers' Party, no, right? So by getting another party, so people can compare, right? put some blachan inside okay not so bland well, the Reform Party's chief, Kenneth Jairadnam, says his party is strongly considering whether or not to contest the by-election. Mr Jairadnam added he will be the candidate fielded if the party does go ahead. And he said he will relocate to live in Pungal East if he is elected. Pongal East, you know, is a quarter of the size of West Coast. And so, despite the short amount of time available, we are very confident. Locally on the ground, the residents have the same issues as most constituencies. Secretary General of the Singapore Democratic Alliance, Desmond Lim, said the party is operationally ready. Mr Lim confirmed that the SDA field a candidate but declined to reveal a name for now. Well, uh, it's good to have more than two parties in the parliaments. Uh, the parliaments need to have a diversified voice. And uh, also this will prevent that in case if it happened that the two parties uh, came into a coalition, they will still have other opposition voice in the parliaments. Former Singapore People's Party member ben Benjamin Pui had also indicated his interest, but by airtime, he could not be reached for comment. Now, Amanda, what about the residents of Pongo East? What do they have to say? Well, um, as for the residents we spoke with, uh, they said it's timely to conduct the by-election this month, and many also point to local issues that they want addressed. Access, uh, like River Plaza took a while to the issues. Uh, other than that, I think more amenities. Some area, they don't have the shelter for we go to the MRT station or bus station. Right? So when heavy rain, uh, those who bring children, whatever, is, they got no the proper place to go. Uh. They run away, so quite dangerous. Uh. And for more on the issue, we have with us Assistant Professor Eugene Tan from the Singapore Management University. Eugene, let's talk a bit about the timing. Why do you think that PAP had moved so quickly this time? Well, Jen, you know, the Prime Minister has indicated that he would like the nation to focus on the big issues and, and the by-election in, in Pongal could be a, a distraction if it's not held um, before, the, for example, the white paper on, 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 on population. So I think that, that, that's one, one factor. And I suppose another factor would be uh, the Prime Minister um, recognising the moral obligation right, of his party to allow the voters in, in, in Pongo East to choose uh, their own elected representative rather than having a, a stand-in MP. And lastly, I, I, I think that the PAP leadership would have probably come to the conclusion that it would be advantageous for them to have a sooner by-election rather than having it later you know so on balance you know i i think um, a, a earlier by-election conveys a, a strategic advantage to the pap mm. well, why do you do you say that it would be more advantageous for the pap to have a by-election sooner rather than later 
Well, the PAP is the incumbent party. Uh, um, you know, they, they are battle ready, uh, having fought the general election in May uh, 2011. Um, so I think they would be able to, to get things up to speed rather quickly. Mm. And I think in a way there is also the recognition that the longer the delay, um, the less well it will go down with the voters in, 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 in Pongo East. And of course, a snap by election will also mean that you would give the opposition parties less time Right, to make two key decisions, right? One is whether to contest, and two, you know, if there are more than, if there's more than one opposition party wanting to contest in Pongo East, then they will have to sort out, you know, how to deal, how to avoid the situation of having a multi-con fight, you know. So a snap, a snap election would mean that you know the parties would have less time, um, you know, to to make uh, reason conclude. Uh, analysis and conclusion, you know, and, and they would probably have to make snap decisions yeah. themselves. So it, it seems like it's a strategic move for them to act so, so swiftly like this. Yes, I, I, I don't think we, we I feel that we, we can't deny that, you know, that, that at the back of all this certainly is, 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 is the important consideration of whether it be advantages, you know, but I think what the Prime Minister did, you know, certainly recognises the legitimate expectations of the Pongo East voters, you know, to have their own elected representative, and I think that's an important. Now, speaking about multi-cornered fight, it seems to be inevitable. But you know, it um, to what extent do you think the opposition would actually come to a compromise? I mean, does it make sense for even a six part, uh, you know, six cornered fight? Well, Jen, I don't think that there will be as many as six candidates. You know, um, my hunch is that you know it'll be three, um, and I think that most people there there would be probably be public expectations for just a straight fight because you know that would make things. A lot more cleaner and and and, and less contentious, um, but I think at this point in time, you know, and right up to nomination day, I think we can expect a fair bit of posturing. Uh, one is that I think the opposition parties are also trying to seek concessions, um, you know, for the next general election. You know, so uh, it could be a situation where they say, look, in exchange for us not contesting this time, you know, uh, would you be able, would you be prepared to concede, uh, you know, th this particular constituency in the next general election? So I think we will see quite a bit of, of, of posturing and I, and I don't think that we will see any, any firm conclusions uh, until nomination day itself. You know? So the next couple of days will be very interesting in, in, in my view. So interesting that you've put it down to posturing uh, you know, by the opposition parties. I, I don't mean posturing in any negative sense. You know? I, I think it, it is part of the whole uh, uh, political uh, battle you know, to try to secure uh, as best uh, a sort of uh, situation for yourself, you know, if not for this by-election, then certainly, you know, for, for the next general election. Because I think the parties are very realistic, you know, that, that a multi cornered fight will essentially give uh, the PAP uh, a tremendous advantage, you know, it would be almost as good as giving them victory on a silver platter. So I think there is the, the need to actually avoid a multi cornered fight, you know, and a three cornered fight, I think, will, 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 do, just, will do just as bad a damage. You know? Exactly, exactly. It will still dilute votes if you have a three cornered fight. And by, you know, by any indication, it looks like the SDP will not back down. And we, we know that the WP Workers' Party will contest the seat because, you know, it did so in the last elections and it didn't do too bad with 41% of valid votes that it got. So um, there seems to be no compromise. Yes, so, so, so I think you know, a, a snap by-election certainly has this effect on, on the opposition parties. You know? so, so, so the opposition parties will, you know, in, the, in the next six days you know, will not be able to work the ground you know, because they have to deal with these other, other considerations as well. Right? Whereas, the, whereas the PAP can begin to campaign in, in earnest. Mm. Let's talk a bit about issues. What do you think? What issues do you think will be raised? And you know about um, local? Do you think national issues will get into the fray? Well, I think there will be a combination of national as well as local issues. You know, um, and, and I don't think that there will be any uh, determinative local issues. You know, yes, it'd be nice to have River Rivervale more up, up, up and going. You know, it'd be good to have extra amenities. You know, but I don't think they are issues which will make voters decide one way or the other. Um, I think the national issues will be the one where the opposition parties will find that they will gain a lot of traction. You know? So the idea that it would be good to have uh, another opposition MP in parliament you know, to keep the government in check, you know, to, to, to ensure that the, the ruling party is more responsive to the people's needs and concerns. Um, but I, I would say that you know, given the, the sort of uh, many hot button issues since uh, that remain in a way uh, still in the process of being resolved since the May 2011 elections, I would say that 
uh, the national issues, you know, so issues such so as immigration, both. yep, cost okay. of living. So a bit of both. So let's talk a little bit about the candidates. Um, very likely, the PAP is going to be fielding uh, Dr. Ko uh, Pokun, a surgeon. Um, does it make sense for them to put in a fresh face instead of a heavyweight from the party? Well, I, I think in, in a way the party would have weighed, weighed the risk and, and I think the PAP would have decided, you know, on balance it would be better to field uh, uh, a fresh candidate, someone new. Uh, I think when Risky? you look... Risky, um, to some extent, yes, you know, but I think, I think that it's a risk that, that, that they've calculated, which is something that they could bear. I think in the end, voters are going to decide uh, not just on, on, the, on the party alone, but certainly the candidate. And, and I think in their view, you know, they have got uh, a good candidate. Um, if you talk about candidates who, PAP candidates who, who perhaps have lo uh, who lost, let's say, in, in the May 2011 elections or, or uh, Mr. Desmond uh, Chu from, from, from Ho Kang, I think those are not really viable options, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and it's better to, you know, to, to go in with, with, with Let's talk about a familiar face. face, like WP, right? Yeah, what uh, Lee Vivian did well uh, as, you know, uh, in, in the last election. Do you think, uh, you know, sh sh the WP will field her again and then how she would be a heavyweight compared to a fresh face? No? Yes, I, I think intuitively, you know, I think there's, there, there would be the sense that uh, Miss Lee would probably be the, the best candidate, you know, but, but the PAP has, the WP has been very good with, with their strategy and, and I think, you know, they have also acquired a brand name for themselves, you know. So, any candidate that's endorsed by the WP, you know, will, will probably come in, in, in good standing as well. Um, but certainly, Miss Lee will have the advantage of being familiar with the ground mm -hmm. issues. The voters will be fami familiar with her, um, you know. So, so I think we, we can see whatever it is a very keen contest, you know, whether it's a straight fight or whether it's a multi-con fight. All right, Eugene, thanks for joining me. Imelda, thanks for being here with me. And I was, I was speaking with Assistant Professor Eugene Tan from the Singapore Management University.